I understand what it's like to deal with anxiety. There's been times in my life that uh, I've had to deal with that in my past when I was a younger adult. But for the most part, I could talk myself out of it. But what happens when you can't? Well, that happened to me in 2017 when I had this really bad kidney stone that brought with it a lot of anxiety and I wasn't able to talk myself out of being anxious or having panic attacks, whatever you want to call them. And this was new to me. I didn't like it. And I, I was uh, really struggling for about a week. Uh, my house, the, the walls were closing in, so I had to get out one day and I went to work. I was the senior pastor of our church and I, I was going to be preaching that Sunday, so I needed to write my sermon. And I sat down and struggled to, to do anything. I was filled with so much anxiety that I couldn't function. And even though I tried and I, I got up and I walked to our gym and, and, and tried to walk around the gym to try to clear my head and nothing was working. So I finally gave up and, and found somebody else to preach for me that Sunday. But I, I say this to, to try to communicate the fact that if you're in a place where you struggle with anxiety and you just can't get past it, I know what that's like and I want to give you some hope that you can overcome it. Now here's the last, this is the last video in this series. And so I want to share something uh, from Matthew chapter 6 that Jesus said. And from this I hope that, uh, that we can kind of gather uh, a, a different way of thinking. So here's what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 25. He says, I tell you, don't worry about the food or drink you need to live or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. So he's saying, don't worry about stuff. I'm going to provide, so don't, don't fret. In verse 26, he says this, Look at the birds in the air. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them, and you know that you are worth more than the birds. So he's saying, look at the birds. They're, they're worthless. They, they really don't matter much. But God cares for them, and how much more does he care for you? And then he goes on in verse 28. He says, And why do you worry about clothes? Look at how the lilies in the field grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves. So how do you disarm anxiety? You, you stockpile your mind with God thoughts. And this teaching from Jesus is exactly the kind of thing that I'm talking about. That if God cares about birds, if he cares about animals, if he cares about flowers that don't have feelings, that, that don't have souls, that really don't matter that much, if God cares and provides for them, how much more is he going to take care of us who he's crazy about? And so I think that's important for us to think about. Colossians 3, uh, 3 uh, 2 says, think about things of heaven, not the things of earth. So focus your mind, your, your thoughts on God. And that may come uh, by reading scripture. That might come from listening to hymns or listening to your favorite worship music or, or Christian music. Uh, whatever it is, maybe it's spending time with somebody who, who's a really solid Christian uh, and who inspires you. Maybe it's spending time with them and, and hearing from them. Maybe it's listening to a sermon. Whatever it is that makes you think about God, do those things. Now, I said that this is the last in this series. And we've discussed a lot of things about anxiety, and I've tried to give you some secrets, some, some tools, and some things from the, that Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4. But I want to leave you with this one scripture. This is from John 8, 31 and 32. And Jesus is speaking to some people who are Christ followers. And here's what he said. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Listen to this. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So he's saying if you listen, if you think God thoughts, you're going to know the truth and the truth is going to set you free. Free from fear, free from dread, fear, free from worry, free from anxiety. 
And I do believe that God can heal you to the point that, that anxiety is not a part of your life. You know, I told you that, uh, that I couldn't even write that sermon. And so I had somebody else preach. I, I wasn't involved in worship that day. I just, I just went and sat on the first pew and, and just took in what God had planned that day. And our band sang this song by Hillsong called Victor's Crown. And this is when God started to, to heal me and to minister to me. Listen to the second verse. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence, fear is silent, for you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your power overflow. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. And that started to, to really make a difference in, in me. And God started to heal me as I realized that in his presence, fear is silent. And there comes a, a point to where your fear has to face God. And God is undefeated. He's going to win. He's going to overcome. So place your trust in him. That next week, I passed that kidney stone. And some of that anxiety started to fade away to where I could function. And I went back to my office and I found the sermon that I was trying to write when I was struggling so bad. And it was a garbled mess. There's no way I could have used it. But just to see where in only a week where God had brought me uh, was huge. And so for, for months, I, I still had to, to deal with anxiety. Um, and, and so it doesn't go away overnight. But with God's help, you can overcome whatever it is that you're dealing with. I'm here for you. I've told you that plenty of times. So feel free to reach out because I understand and I'm praying for you. So have a great week. Overcome this. If there's anything that I can do for you, uh, feel free to let me know.